Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there is not enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Okay, so here is the parable of the wise and the foolish virgins. Now, you have to remember that chapter 25 is a continuation of chapter 24, where Jesus is on the Mount of Olives and he's speaking to his disciples. And they've just asked, when is it going to be that the temple is destroyed and, and what will be the signs of the end of the age? And so Jesus has been speaking to them on multiple levels talking about the events of AD 70 and the destruction of the temple and for them to be ready and to recognize different signs so that when these things happen, they can flee the city and they can be safe. But he is also very clearly talking about the end of the age and it will be similar to those times where there will be tribulation, persecution, but for us not to worry because Jesus hasn't forgotten about us. He is coming back. He's going to bring judgment to the wicked and he's going to gather his people to himself to be with him forever. And so there is hope in that. There is faith in that. There is peace. There is rest in all of that. But it's also very important to see that Matthew 25 is a continuation of Matthew 24 because in Matthew 25, he really talks about the end of the age. And it shows us that he's also, talk, he's also including that in his sermon in Matthew 24, because it's all part of the same sermon. So even though he's talking about the imminent destruction of the temple, he is also talking about the end of the age. And so some of those events are very similar. And therefore, some of the caution and the warnings that apply to the disciples during AD 70 also actually apply to us believers and to the church right at the end of the age. And it's also very important to see that these parables that Jesus is telling and about to tell are not about giving the church life principles on how to be wise and how not to be foolish. These are actually parables about the end of the age and what it will be like as Christ returns and that there will be a judgment, a judgment day. And those that are wise, that are righteous, will enter into heaven with him. And those that are foolish and those that are wicked and those that have rejected Christ, they're going to be cast out. And so people take these parables and they try to use them for life principles to the church. But actually that's misapplying them. There's a specific purpose that Jesus gives these parables. And it is to contrast the difference between law and works and grace and faith. And that if you want to trust in law and works, then you are not going to be ready for when Christ returns. And that is what a lot of Israel were doing at the time. They, were, they rejected Christ and they were trusting in law and in their works. And Christ came to transition Israel out of law and works and actually into faith and to receive grace. And to receive the new covenant and the, the, the new wine, the spirit of the new covenant, the promise of the Father. And so this parable is talking about just that. It's talking about the groom. Jesus, he's the groom. And the church is the bride. We know that from Ephesians 5 and numbers of other scriptures. And so the, the wedding feast, that is talking about the end of the age. When Christ, when the bridegroom comes, that is the end of the age, the return of Christ. He's coming for his church to take his church in to heaven, to be with him forever, to enjoy the marriage supper. But those who were not ready won't enter in. And so the virgins that were wise, they had oil. And that oil is speaking about the spirit. It's talking about the new covenant. Okay, they were wise because they received Christ. They received the new covenant. They had faith. They were born of the spirit. They were born again. They had the spirit as a deposit. 
guaranteeing what is to come. And so it's speaking symbolically about believers that have the Spirit. They have the new covenant. They have faith in Christ. They will be ready for when, the, when Christ returns. But the foolish virgins are people that have rejected Christ. They don't have oil, so they don't have the Spirit. They don't have the new covenant. They don't have the, the Spirit as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. So they're not ready for when Christ returns. And so if they have faith in Christ, they'll be born of the Spirit, they'll have the oil, and they will be ready for when the groom returns, when Christ returns at the end of the age. And that is what that is talking about. And when you see it, it just seems so obvious. <laughs>